Meta has once again released one of their top class models to the open source community. Today I'm going to talk about Dino V3 which is a successor to Dino V2 and you can see that the model is quite capable. Currently it can be utilized for various tasks and comes with very different sizes and they have also provided the benchmarks for various tasks and how it performs but let me tell you Dino V3 is already one of the most advanced vision backbone models out there if you remember in this channel we do use birds 200 species classification data set for various benchmarking and in previous videos I did train a image embedding model to do re-ranking but uh, use the top one prediction as a classification label to compute the classification accuracy and with the Dino V2 backbone using the open metric learning library I was able to achieve around 86% accuracy. Today I'm going to test out Dino V3 and see how it performs but there's a small caveat here that is the weights for Dino V3 are gated so it is freely available but uh, you will need to fill a form and that makes it a little bit annoying to use and also it is part of some licensing so the open metric learning team are not yet willing to work on it so they haven't integrated the v3 backbone to their embedding training framework but we can still test out the capability of this model by training a classification model so since it is a vision backbone so training a classification model is not very difficult we are going to use the backbone freeze the weights and then add a linear head on top of it and only train that layer to align the output from the Dino v3 for the classification task um, so this model has already been used in different departments but I will just go and talk about our use case that is a training a birds 200 species classification model as you can see I have already prepared the notebooks that is what I do most of the time and I also make sure that you don't have to worry about the environment so I already provide the docker compose and docker files so that you can build the container and run it yourself you can find the link to the github repository in the description where you can go and clone this repository and simply doing a docker compose up should be able to get you up and running with the environment so the very first notebook in our repository is this that is dataset preparation and i don't have to tell you again and again but you can just go visit this url you need to be signed in to the kaggle and even hit the download button let me show you how this works here you go and you you click on the download hub and download as zip what this does is this will start downloading the file immediately you just have to pause it go to full download history and then just copy the link from here and once you do that you can come here and paste this this link is expired but if you paste the latest link you should be able to download it directly without logging in so this is how i downloaded the dataset and then this is small um, set of commands which extracts the information and then deletes the unnecessary files so once I downloaded the directory, you can see these are the content. So we have 200 directories inside the images and each directory is basically a class label and each class label directory contains n number of images per class. That's the very simple image classification dataset format. Now let's come on to the model training. So um, you can just go and execute the notebook. I'll just show you how it works. So these are some common imports and uh, i download the data from the kaggle and then here i'm using the dataset.image folder to load the directory and please be careful that i am pointing to images directory because that is where our uh, subdirectories of classes are so after loading this i also split it this into 80 20 split so as i can use it for training and validation purposes and uh, this dataset image folder already computes the number of classes and the class labels for us so i can just use this also have this id to label label to id so that i can convert the string values into a numeric representation for the class which is required for training the model and when the model predicts an index for the class label i should be able to convert it back to label so i need these two mappings so the next line here is I am loading the weights. So I'm loading the weights from the local disk because uh, to log in from to load from hugging face I need to download the 
uh, i would need to actually log in to my account which i don't want to do so i will just show you how i downloaded this so you can search for this model and you should be able to get the hugging face link for this model and here if you come to file and versions you should be able to see the model widths you can go and download one by one for each file or you can click up here clone the repository and then follow these instructions make sure that you have the git lfs installed in your environment to be able to do it download it with the git for me i have already downloaded it here so inside the downloads directory i have the model files which i'm going to load locally so this is how i'm loading so auto image processor from pre-trained that is going to load the image processor then the backbone is basically the model widths from pre-trained widths and then i'm also loading the image parser config and backbone config from the same directory this is so that when i save the checkpoints directory i should be able to put the configuration in the same weight file so that later when i have the trained model i don't need the uh, pre-trained weights to just build the model architecture because it depends on config file and i can just save the config file with the model weights so a single model weight should be able to do all of those things and here i am adding a dino v3 linear this is here in this class what it does is it takes backbone as an input stores it inside the class and then in the forward pass it passes through the backbone gets the image embeddings from the dino v3 model and then use the head which is a linear layer very simple uh, to do the classification task and here are some additional functions which is required where we are loading the data set into a data loader for iterating on batches then here i have defined the optimizer and other uh, scalar and loss functions for model training this is a small evaluation function uh, which helps us to test how the model is performing during training most of these uh, snippets are taken from the online github or hugging face repositories and i have just modified it as per my use case so that i can uh, train and store the weights and then later use it for my purposes so here we have our training loop where uh, we're iterating on the data loader in batches and now the optimizer and loss functions are repeated here and the important part is um, once the model is uh, evaluated i check the well accuracy if the well accuracy improves i save the model weights i do not write the model weight for each and every epoch because that is going to take the disk space and not be very useful instead what i do is i only save the best model and that is evaluated based on the validation accuracy if the accuracy improves the best model is going to be updated and if you see here while doing toss.save i'm also adding this config step where i am storing the backbone config and image processor config so that later we can construct the model architecture with the same weight files that we saved the disk without needing the pre-trained weights so this is kind of it once you start running this this will train your model and in the weights directly you will see we have the model weight file and uh, from here you can go to the inference notebook you can also do it during training that's why i have it in a different notebook and once you execute this i will just show you how it works i'm going to load the model best and i'm going to construct the uh, model using the config stored inside the weight files and that's how the model is loaded once that is done i'm going to predict on a single class so you can see um, randomly choosing an image and then predicting on that so this is what the model predicted with a confidence of 95 percent and if you want to test it out on multiple images uh, i have this small utility here which plots 30 images and the ground truth and their predictions and confidence score for those predictions as well um, this is running on a server so the processing might be faster but the image takes time to load due to network bandwidth but you can see this is what it looks like mm, so you can see how your model is performing by using this but interestingly i can also use this evaluation notebook to basically test out the accuracy of the model
and i have already run it on both test train set and validation set and you can see this is kind of getting 96 percent accuracy if you remember previously with dino v2 and embedding model we were getting around 86 percent accuracy only this time it is 10 percent jump which is significant and uh, only tells that Dino V3 is pretty improved model. And by the way, I haven't even used the largest model. So Meta claims that their 7 billion model is the best. But uh, I tried with different weight files because speed versus accuracy matters a lot. And also you need to be careful about the hardware where you're deploying it. So I started out with the tiny weights, then small and then medium. So medium is basically base model. Uh, so with the small weights i was getting around like 90 percent accuracy but not able to pass through that so i tried base model and base model reached around 96 and it is not um, not a significant difference between the model size so i chose to stay with base model and then trained it and this is how it is performing in the later videos i will try to use the dino v3 for other tasks so that's all for this video. I hope you liked and enjoyed it. Please interact with the video, drop a like, drop a comment and this will help boost the video.